Hey guys, so we're uh, we're back. We're we're recovering from CHFA. I hope you all kind of made it home okay, and everyone's recovering. Um, kind of a super wicked show because I think um, we all kind of felt a lot of energy coming out of the show. But I think Kenny and I wanted to um, talk through something that we saw quite a bit at the show that maybe we're hoping brands um, think about a little bit more. <coughs> Hey Kenny, like we we saw a lot of really great products, but then a lot of. And there's just a lot of good everywhere. First off, the yeah. show like you said was really good. The buzz was good. People are talking a lot yeah. of business, and I think Aaron and his crew are really trying to make it more of yeah. a. It's a health industry, but it's yeah. not the health industry of old, where it's a little maybe fluffier. Sorry, guys, I was part of this for 25 years too, um, where it's becoming a little bit more business focused, mm -hmm. which is I think where we were going. Or things we were noticing saying, guys, you got to start mm -hmm. looking at things a little bit more mm -hmm. analytically, critically thinking yeah. about yeah. things. And, and we're starting to see some of that on margin, right? Because <laughs> um, if you know anything about the two of us, we, we talk about margin a lot, right? Um, we saw some of that in margin. I think the one that really kind of stuck out for us was um you know placement um like thinking through where things go in a store and where they could fit right kenny like we we saw well i think it became out of i think no. the biggest thing we had it's all yeah. in so i think when we were doing launch pad i think one of the things that after it was over when we were at the mixer what we were both talking about is like almost almost every single one that we talked to I was trying to understand where did you think this was actually going to go mm -hmm. in the mm -hmm. store? Some because they were white space. Mm -hmm. So you really need to help me as a buyer because I don't know where you want it. Yeah. I can tell you where I'm thinking. So we may not yeah. align. Others because they made sense where they were potentially going, but your offerings didn't make sense for the placement that you think you're going to get out of that set. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. It really like does. Misses, right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, and I think, I think that, like, so, so, in case you're, you know, you're, you're a brand, and and you're one of the ones that we talk to, and you're kind of going, oh, that's unfair. I think that the thing, the rationale behind this is, is one is if you're going into, um, it's 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 great to kind of dream about where this can go, but the problem is, is like you've got to teach. In many of these cases, you've, you've got a kind of breakthrough product that consumers aren't used to seeing already. So you're already swimming uphill because you've got to teach a consumer a new product. Now you've got to teach a consumer to go to a different set to look for the product, right? And then you've I got to teach consumers that, that go to that set to think about that product in the way that you want them to think about I it. I think right? you even bounced ahead. Yeah. You're right. But the first step before you get to there you got to make sure the buyer understands what the hell you're trying to do. Because to your point, Phil, yes. the buyers, the, the store yeah. has been set by the buying group. Correct. Yeah. So yeah. they'll put it where they think it belongs mm -hmm. based on what you tell them or what you're mm -hmm. thinking or what, what your product actually is. Mm -hmm. So if you're a toothpaste, you're not going to want to be in the freezer set logically i mean i, I mean yeah. i know that's an extreme yeah. but yeah. you got to get down to those things if you're a toothpaste that's got bubble gum flavor and you know what you are actually more of a candy do you really want to be in the candy aisle like do you know i'm that i think you know, the greatest examples but i'm trying to make extremes well well look I'll, I'll give you one that that actually makes a lot of sense to me and it's it's not a product that we saw this weekend but there's there's a product out there called just egg and it's a plant-based um, liquid egg that uh, mimics scrambled eggs, right? Or well, like so you know, the um, other egg, the other egg, egg right? guy so, is in the fridge. Yeah, so, so you so you pour it, you can scramble liquid it, eggs. you can do all those things, right? Liquid eggs, okay. but it's not placed there. It's placed like at my longos, for example. It's placed um, where the mushrooms and the salads are, like near so salad. Why the hell would I shop for it there? Right. So, and that's my point, right? Is is maybe there's a rationale for why it needs to be there, or so so one of two things happen. Either the just egg folks, which I don't know, right? So full disclosure is I don't know who they are, but um, let's say the just eggs folks, they have a reason to be there, 
right? You kind of go, okay, but nobody knows to look for it there. So now you need to teach people that. Or you've got a buyer who said, or you presented to the wrong buyer actually, and you presented to the person who runs the salad and the mushroom category, and you put it there because that was the first contact that you got at Longo's, you got super okay. excited, and that's where I went. Or and here's the problem, to the right? vegan, maybe the buyer is yeah. vegan or plant-based, is Correct. Correct. all excited and wants it, yeah. still Correct. the wrong place. Yeah, but, but now uh, a whole bunch of things cascade out of this, right? One is now you're already working hard to teach people what this product is. Now you've got to teach them where to find it somewhere new, right? And then three is, you know, you're gonna be working to make sure that the buyer of that category is happy with your performance because the buyer doesn't know this product, right? Like they know mushrooms, they probably know salad dressing, those sort of things. So they're gonna be gauging you against this product. So you're kind of swimming uphill on all of those. And then I think the last thing in there is when you realize, hey, you know what? I'm actually in the wrong set. I should be where the just egg guys or where the liquid egg guys are or burn bray or any Whatever. of those ones, you know, like that are in the classic egg section. Good luck trying to move it. Right. That's one buyer to another. You Plus, know, now you got sales history that probably correct. sucks. Yeah. So what do you suck? I had this argument the other day with one of our other other reps that that I deal with more regularly. Mm -hmm. Right. Same thing is, well, yeah, it's an in. I said, yeah, I get that it's an in. I, I appreciate that. But mm -hmm. if you put it in the wrong spot and it fails, do you think the other buyers are going to say, well, it's obviously with the wrong spot. I'll take yeah. it. Come yeah. on. Yeah. So this doesn't happen that way. So so I think like those were the things that really worried us, right? Because we saw uh, um, quite a few innovative products. And then what we heard of, uh, what we heard more than we were comfortable with was, I'd love to have this in, right? And I, and I think the other part of that is we, we also, in this industry, we've got some heavyweights who have done a lot of heavy lifting. You look at midday squares as a really common example of someone who swum upstream and managed to put something in a category that, um, you know, a lot of CPG folks country, would go, this, 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 country. Is, this is not the right place for it, right? Like that that is definitively what you told Jake and what I told Jake was, Really? You're going to put this in refrigerated? Are you crazy? Like nobody does this here, right? In, in this country, Correct. I appreciate yeah. it was done in the States. I yeah. get that. But yeah. this is in the States. Yeah. So to so, me, those guys yeah. really, but. They did. They swam upstream and they were successful at it. Why though? Right. Because then they went nuts to try to make sure people understood yeah. that that's where it was. Because yeah. it's not in the normal spot. Yeah. But, and I, I think that's where I was going on this too, is now you look at it and go, the flip side is it, it like, if you look at, and, and they really are like, you know, Jake and the midday squares crew, they're amazing, but they've, you know, that share of voice, like he, he's out there I'm sure, man. He's an anomaly. seven days a week, you he's know, an 365 days. Well, it's not just anomaly, but it's two things, right? One is he's an anomaly, right? Cause exactly. he's out there 24 seven. Well, then think of the budget you need. Exactly. Now, so I, I don't know. Right. So I don't know Jake's budget. I've never asked him that question, but think of in your own life, if you had to do what you do now and then shout at the top of your voice 24 seven, we're in a different set. Don't go there, go there, go there, go there, go there. You, you got to think of, you know what I mean? Like you got to think of that because that is the example is like, that's what you got to do to make this He's thing go. He's the classic example. So, First off, yeah. the guy runs 24 seven then. Yeah. There's a huge cost to it yeah. emotionally, uh, yeah. physically, mentally, financially. Yeah. Right now they're able to do it, but honestly, that's an anomaly because yeah. most companies can't do that. Those three run on, I don't know what the hell they run on. Adrenaline. Whatever the hell it is, they run. squares. <laughs> right? But I'll tell you what, I can give you a yeah. lot more examples yeah. of the ones who didn't work than the ones yeah. who did. So yeah. God bless them. They did a great yeah. job. You're right. You're I seriously, I mean, everybody in the whole industry knows knows these guys. And and Jake's a young guy, hasn't been around that long. Mm -hmm. Right? But he's yeah. his personality is and his just Jake. It's he's different, man. Wow. But just yeah. you you gotta see past that past that. If nothing else, you gotta look at budgets and go. I agree with you. Can I can I afford that? Right? Can I afford the media? Can I afford, afford the time? Money, right? Can I afford the time? All of those sort of things. Yeah. So, anyway, this this was our fast thought. Um, we thought it was important because we, we 
we do. We see products and and um, the industry. We're getting better, right? We we saw better margins. We saw people stopping just think a lot about of margins too. Yeah, yeah. And really worry. well thought out, well designed product. Lovely right? packaging, um, beautiful. Yeah, it's priced yeah. okay. The challenge was, like you and I said, there's a bunch of them that worry me because I worry in the set they're going to end mm -hmm. up in. Mm -hmm. They're already battling white space. Now you're battling within a space that's not white. Mm -hmm. Do you get what I'm seeing? Like the Correct. product's in white, but yeah. the placement ain't white. Yeah. The placement's established. Yeah. Are they going to get who the hell you are or why you're there? Yeah. Yeah. That's my worry for them. I yeah. mean, again, I, lots of like wonderful product, yeah. wonderful product, but I'm just scared that they're not going to be seen. Okay. That's our fast thought. Um, if you're worried about your placement, hit us up. We'll, we'll talk about it. We yeah. uh, love doing this. We, we love working with people. Um, you know, honestly, uh, there were a couple of brands um, that we came away blown away by the quality of the product. Mama. And then we spent quite a few days worried about, gosh, are they are they going to the right places? Are they? And we, we don't work with them or do anything like that. We just we, we just love some of these folks. We love what they do. And then we came away worried about what could happen to, you know, what they're doing. So, that's um, it. yeah, no that's critique it. outside of that. I just please yeah. take the time to think it through because yeah, there's no, there's no interest in us having watch people not succeed. I don't yeah. know why would, why would that motivate yeah. us? Yeah. Right. I mean, I just, there's no sense to that. I just want people to do well and, you know, pop it, especially when you got some good stuff. Yeah. Going. Yeah. Okay. So that's it. Uh, we hope, you're all home, safe and sound. And then we hope you have a wonderful weekend chilling out with the family. Clearly, um, none of us were home last weekend, um, but it was a killer show. Like I, I think at 3.30, quarter to four on the last day, and there's still people running around, not trading samples, which is kind of normal at the end of these shows, but actually yeah. trying to get stuff done, still trying to meet people, right? So. Um, if you're home, we hope you get some nice rest with the family or or get some sleep and uh, um, and we'll see you all soon. Sounds good. Take care, everybody. Thanks, guys.